All right, here we go. Okay. Here we are with another challenge. This is a viewer challenge for regular viewers of the channel. You will know that for 10,000 channel points, you can challenge me to a game of your choice. Uh, and usually, they're sort of chess adjacent games, at least a lot of them have been. Uh, this one comes to us from our very own that other guy, David, AKA Gordian Tangle. He has challenged us to Baroque versus chess. What are we talking about? So there is a game called Baroque chess, which is like a play on regular chess, but the pieces all do different things. Um, and it's super interesting. Baroque versus chess, the game that we will be playing, is where one player has chess pieces that move like regular chess pieces. The other player has chess pieces that move like Baroque chess pieces. Uh, the game Baroque chess, also referred to as Ultima. Uh, there we go. Let's dive into the rules. What the hell do the pieces actually do? Okay. You hear what the pieces do. Hold on. Uh, let's make sure that... Capturing uh, all the pieces except for the king. The king and pawn have different names. The king is the only piece that captures as chess pieces do by moving onto a square that's occupied by an enemy piece. All the other pieces capture enemy pieces in more complex ways. Friendly pieces are never allowed to capture other friendly pieces. Okay, great. Um, hold on. In Baroque, the king is the one piece alone that is limited to moving exactly one square at a time. It moves and takes just like the king in chess. All the remaining pieces on the first rank may move like the queen in all directions. Let's read that one more time. All of the remaining pieces on the first rank may move like the queen. In other words, uh, every piece that isn't the king or a pawn moves like a queen. They have this power as a matter of privilege, as they are all considered to be noble pieces. This is a kind of privilege that attaches to them at birth, that is at the outset of the game and is never diminished. What a weird flavor description of the rule. They retain this privilege no matter where they go, except when they find themselves next to an immobilizer. Pawns, on the other hand, move just like the rook moves in chess, unable to move diagonally. Just as in chess, pawns are the peasants of this game. Unlike chess, Pawns are never promoted to another kind of piece. There's no magic square to which pawns can be moved and then promoted. Okay, great. Now, okay. Pieces. Here we go. This is where... This is where Baroque chess gets funky. The king moves and captures like a standard chess king. The objective of the game is to capture the opposing king. Fast play with a chess clock usually makes declaration of checkmate a very rare thing to achieve an actual face-to-face -face play, whatever. Okay, so the king is just like a king. Did some snooty nobleman write this section of the rules? I guess so. Seems like. All right, pawns. In this game, pawns are called pincers or squeezers, <laughs> which is interesting. They move like chess rooks, a pawn captures any opposing piece. Clear piece description in chat. All right, David this entire time has been describing the pieces in the chat. Uh, so maybe let's just read his descriptions. How it works is the way that pawns capture. First of all, pawns move like rooks. Uh, we have to remember that. Um, the way that pawns capture is if you move a pawn so that you sandwich one piece or pincer or squeeze that piece between two of your pieces, that piece gets captured. This is what happens. Uh, only one of those pieces has to be a pincer. The other can be any friendly piece. So this move captures this pawn. And these pieces move like rooks. The one that just moved has to be the pincer. So if, you know, you make some move with this, such that this is the end of turn, this piece does not get captured if this was the piece that moved to this location. 
what has to happen is that the pawn has to be the piece that moved. And pawns move like rooks. All of the other non-king, non-pawn pieces move like queens, pawns move like rooks. This capture works horizontally and vertically, but it doesn't work diagonally. That's how pawns move, okay. And, and how they capture as well. All right, okay. Uh, next up, let's see. Uh, let's do, uh, hold up. Let's consider a custodial form of capture like in that This is, what a weird article. I, doesn't make sense, uh, but okay, sure. Uh, the withdrawer or retreater, represented by the queen, captures by moving directly away from an adjacent piece. Okay, that's really cool. So in other words, so the way that it captures is by moving directly opposite the direction of the piece that is to be captured. Uh, it is not from adjacency to non-adjacency. It is only directly away. Um, and, and, and that is diagonal and uh, like horizontal vertical, right? Uh, so like this also captures the pawn? Yeah? Okay, okay, okay. So adjacency and then direct movement away. That's how, that's how the queen captures. What's the queen called again? It's called the withdrawer, right, or the retreater, okay. Uh, what's Gordian called it? Gordian's called it the withdrawer, okay, we'll call it the withdrawer. Uh, next, we'll do knights. Long leapers, represented by knights, capture, well, okay, let's read the uh, David description. The long leaper moves like a queen, but captures by jumping over pieces. Can capture multiple pieces on a move, so long as it can land after each capture. Okay, so what that means to me is that it moves like a queen, but ends up on the other side of the piece and captures it. Can I get confirmation that that is how it works? Uh, but seriously, try my descriptions in order. All right, we'll go back to the, to the coordinator. <laughs> after this one. Okay, and as long as there is room for multiple jumps, it captures as many as it can in a row, right? Like this would capture both of these? Correct, okay. Now, can there be as much like does it capture both of these pawns in this position? Can't capture two adjacent? Yeah, so this, no capture. Here, captures both of them and ends up on A8, right? Can't jump over a friendly. Okay, that's good to know. All right, okay. Coordinator, rook. The rook moves like a queen. Uh, captures on the squares that share a rank or file with both the king and the coordinator. The rook moves the coordinator on marked rook. And looking at the king, the rook and the king form a box, a rectangle, and the opposite corners of that box that are not occupied by either the king or the rook, pieces on those squares get captured. And that is calculated after the coordinator moves. So in other words, if there is a king here for some reason and you move the coordinator here, that would capture on this square and this square. So if you draw lines on the file and the rank of each of those two pieces, the places where those lines intersect, in this case here and here, are the squares on which the coordinator captures, which is awesome. Fantastic. Uh, what's next? The chameleon, the bishop, 
moves like a queen when not capturing, when capturing moves like whatever it is capturing. Okay, so to clarify, imitators are chameleons, which are the bishops. Capture any piece by moving as a piece of the type captured would have moved to capture. Okay, so in other words, uh, if you were trying to capture, let's go to full cam. It does immobilize an immobilizer, that's good to know. Okay, so the way the bishops work is the piece that they're capturing is how they have to capture that piece. So if, uh, I don't know, if there's like this situation is happening, then uh, actually it can't capture it like that. But let's say that this happens. Um, If you want to capture this pawn, you can do so by moving the bishop as a pawn would move to capture that pawn. So, pawns move like rooks. As a result of the end of the move, uh, it captures this pawn. Because if this was a pawn, this piece would be captured if it moved there, etc. Which is actually super cool. And I can imagine like a crazy situation where an imitator or a bishop uh, can capture multiple pieces at once and in different ways. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, okay, so to clarify, does it capture regular chess pieces as if they were Baroque chess pieces, right? Or does it capture and move the way that like a chess piece would for the purposes of Baroque versus chess. It captures as if they are whatever chess piece. Oh, that's that's lame as fuck. I'm not going to lie to you. Takes a knight with a knight move, takes a queen with a queen move. All right, you heard it here first. Because we are playing where one side has Baroque rules, one side has chess rules, the way that the chameleons work in this game mode is that they move like a queen generally, but otherwise they capture an opposing piece only if they can move the way that that piece would move to capture it. So it can only capture a knight from a knight's move away. It can only capture a pawn from a pawn take away, like that, uh, you know, etc., etc. It can only, like, if this happens, uh, it can't capture this rook, uh, but if this happened, then it could capture this rook, etc. That's how the bishops work. What have we done? We've done the pawn. Uh, pawns capture by, uh, by like, sandwiching another piece horizontally or vertically. Uh, rooks capture by making a box with the king. Um, knights capture, like, uh, checkers pieces on crack. Chameleons capture by moving the way that the thing that they're capturing uh, moves. Queens capture by moving directly away uh, from a piece. Kings are kings. The last piece is the immobilizer, which is the upside down rook. Enemies adjacent to it can't move, but can commit honorable Sudoku. Well, there we go. Okay, so th this thing moves like a queen moves. Uh, and it can't capture pieces, but what it can do is cause pieces that are adjacent to it to not be able to move. However, I'm guessing it takes, you can spend your turn to kill a piece of your own next to an immobilizer. Is that what you're saying? Just for clarification, correct? All right, you can take your turn to take one of your pieces next to an immobilizer off the board. Okay, um, fantastic. Well, let's go ahead and get started then. GLHF, game one. I have the chess pieces. David has the Baroque pieces. Uh, let's do this. <laughs> go ahead, we'll, we'll play without time for the beginning. I think that we can both sort of like police ourselves and not take too much time. The starting move is of course the legendary a2 to a5. Now I have a lot of consideration to perform here. Uh, wow, okay. Let's see. 
Okay, so things that I have to be aware of. Uh, the checkers based captures of the knight. The bishop generally I don't I can sort of treat as like any other chess piece. That's not a big deal. I only have to worry about the queen when adjacency is happening. Uh, the immobilizer yeah, I can worry about. Uh, and I have to worry about, this is almost similar to Othello chess, uh, the way that I have to worry about these guys. Now, the fact of the matter is, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play b6. I'm going to play b6. I'm going to play b6. If I open this up, I don't actually have to worry about, um, I guess this is why it seems like maybe it is balanced. Because I can just capture, so, okay, a5 to a6 has happened, uh, which I anticipated. Um, I can just capture this, though, with my bishop. And he can't take back with his coordinator. Because uh, coordinators suck. <laughs> So not a big deal at all. Let's go. So I don't really know. I don't really know which 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 way is stronger. <laughs> this is gonna be a real pain in the pain in the ass to explain to anyone hopping into stream. <laughs> it's like how what kind what the hell kind of chess are you guys playing? All right. So I need. That bishop is now threatening to capture my bishop because it is the chameleon. Uh, do I care? I can either capture it. I'm glad to buff the coordinator. Did the rook drink too much? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Um, I think capturing... We can recapture with tempo. Then again, my bishop is probably actually a lot stronger than his coordinator. Or sorry, then his chameleon. Um, but then, like, our knight's going to be on the rim. Uh, and you know what they say about that. But then the only way that he can recapture is actually with the king. We force a king move. Is that good? <laughs> is it good to force a king move? What, what's the alternative? Oh, we could Frappuccino... Our bishop. Frappuccino, the bishop. Then how does he defend? Wow, Baroque pieces kind of suck, don't they? Looks like a queen otherwise. Okay, we're we're gonna Frappuccino. We're gonna play uh we're gonna play bishop. Oh, but then this defends like the, it's defended right now because a rook move will recapture. Okay. Alright, okay. I'm I'm gaining an intuition. This is, oh, this is my shit, dude. Can I just say, David really doesn't miss, man. <laughs> Every single challenge that he's brought to the table here has just been so fantastic. It's just been such delicious food for mental thought. Mental thought, that's really funny. Uh, delicious food for thought, that is completely <laughs> redundant. I could have just said that. Sorry to defend it. Always has been. That's what I'm saying. G5. Oh, he really likes doing that, huh? He's played G5. If we capture this pawn, it is also defended. But if we capture, then we can we can capture back. Is castling good? Queen is the retreater, but then if we capture, oh, but then that's a ah. Oh, but we can, we got the queen side frappuccino. H six. Go ahead. H six. If we find we're taking too much time, then we'll, we'll just pull out the old chess clock. No, no big deal.
This, this game's interesting already. That, uh, that coordinator... Like, little did I realize... <laughs> clearing... Okay. Problem here is that if we capture, then he captures with that... With that pawn or that pincer. What do we want here? Okay, so what this thing defends is everything, well, okay, what this thing defends is A1 and anything on the E file where it can get to on the A file, right? So it defends this pawn, but not that much else. To reach that pawn, it has to capture here. So what we could do is push this pawn and then we've covered our bases to get that free pawn. And I feel like one of his pawns is much more valuable than one of my pawns? Question mark. We say tentatively. If I push this pawn to get this pawn, I mean that pawn can retreat is the issue. Kind of hurts my structure to do that. Where's my structure to push that pawn to, honestly? Alright. I want to kick this pawn so that I can capture this pawn and then threaten that immobilizer with impunity. So, we play g6. We play g6. Easiest g6 of my life. G5 to B5 has been played. Wow. Hmm. Thank God the pawns only move like rooks. Honestly, could just kick that pawn again, right? No shame in that. Why not? A6, man. I think a computer implementation of a chess-like game is the best way to really learn the mechanics. Doing it on board is difficult, particularly if both players are new to the game. I agree. The computer assisted, you know, the computer forces you to do the rules appropriately, then I agree. Zillions of games has Baroque, but not Baroque versus chess. But Rathaniel, you fail to consider the fact that if we play it on board, I get to show off my beautiful chess board and, and piece set that I just purchased and rationalized as a business expense, even though it costs a lot of money. Uh, B2, B4 were played. It doesn't defend the piece, though. It doesn't threaten any piece. Bishop can't capture because it captures like a... It captures a pawn like a pawn. Long Leaper here, I don't really care because it's defended. Um, what's hilarious is he can Frappuccino his bishop. To prevent my Bishop Frappuccino. <laughs> it's really good. You know what? We're just going to capture here. Because it threatens his um, coordinator. Hell yeah, dude.
Good looking chess pieces are OP, objectively more powerful. Ozan, I could not agree with you more. It's like how food tastes better when it looks nicer uh, or when it's free, but I suppose less relevantly. Bro broke uh, development is objectively weird. It really is. A1, B2. Oh, I forgot it moves like a queen. If he really wanted to there, I suppose he could have captured this pawn. <laughs> uh, A1, A8 captured the king. You're not even wrong. Um, but he can't go to A8. Or sorry, he can't go to um, A8. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's not a rook exactly. All right, so he saves his coordinator. Yeah, that's why I wanted to open up the... Yeah, yeah. No, if it were... Uh, yeah, or, or or if he could get here as well, the same thing would happen. Um, I think we, I think we probably just kick his coordinator, right? Now. Let's Frappuccino our bishop. Bishop Frappuccino, fantastic in both chess versus Baroque and chess versus chess. That's the rationale for swapping king and withdrawer for black only in Baroque versus Baroque. Ah, okay. So coordinators can't just immediate checkmate. That makes some sense. I get it. Oh, you know what I could have done? Well, I, I wanted to kick it around because it's kind of uncomfortable for him now. Uh, and it will enable me to sort of develop, I think, some of these pawns. Uh, the, these central pawns, if I kick around the rook, which is why I like bishop g7. However, uh, d4. Oh, B, B4, B4, D4, okay. Um, what I actually could have done instead of attempting to kick that piece is capture this with impunity because um, he had a pawn here so he couldn't recapture, uh, but I didn't consider that he could remove this pawn to both block this and defend this pawn. So that, that, was, that was a bit of a misplay. Um, but what we can try to do is undouble our pawns, right? Let me think about this. We could also capture his long leaper. This, oh no, it's defended by the queen. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, why not? We're, we're just going to play a, a cool c5. c5. By the way, how do you guys feel, just like aesthetically, about the size of the pieces versus the size of the board? It's not like traditional proportions, but do you think it's too big? g5? To d5. There's nothing on g5. This is g5. So please help. h5 to d5. Okay, so the the cap the recapture has been secured. I'm into chunky pieces. Nice pieces can't be too big. You got a good point. I, I want to trade a pawn for the pincer, right? Just hard to see some black pieces on the background of other black pieces blends together. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Mm. Okay, so I capture this, and he can either recapture with this move or this move, but if he recaptures with this move, then I recapture that anyway, and I feel like that's it's better for me to whittle, because his pawns get more useless. Uh, let's get some trades going, enough four play. All right, C takes D4. Say less, fam. I guess it's weird to call you fam when you just told me that uh, you've had enough four play, so regretting that word choice. The only piece that's bigger 
than uh, its own square, I think, is the king, and that's not by that much. Um, D2, D3 takes. All right, boom. Our first Baroque capture has occurred. Now, the only issue... Okay, so no captures can happen and then can't... Okay. I think that we want to do this. Yeah, we're, we're definitely playing <laughs> rook b2, classic, classic chess move. Rook, rook a2, sorry, um, I said b2. For that early game, <laughs> that early game second rank rook pressure, I watched Topolov play this in, uh, in 82. I feel like the objectively strongest Baroque piece is kind of useless, sitting uselessly away from the action. What do you think is the objectively strongest Baroque piece? Objectively is a... That's quite a... Quite a claim, by the way. I can't wait to have the Baroque pieces, man. Uh, B2, B4. All right, all right, all right. What do you think the strongest one is? I don't really know. I don't really know. I think it's hard to say, man. How do we maintain pressure? He can't really capture anything, right? With the... I guess we develop our knight. Probably... This way? Why the hell not? Let's do it. All right, so knight, what is that now? Uh, knight, knight c6. By the way, what happens to an immobilizer next to a chameleon? Immobilizer and chameleon mutually immobilize, but the immobilizer hits everything adjacent and the comedian only hits the immobilizer. Oh, that's good to know. Doesn't really matter though. Cause uh, he only, can chameleon my pieces. Part of the charm of playing this IRL is that onlookers have no idea what's happening on the board. Completely agree. That's really funny. H1, H5. Can't recapture. That's how the game works. Now, I am wondering, oh, I just get this piece, right? I mean, I'll bite. I don't see how he recaptures. He doesn't have a chameleon within knight striking distance. Yeah, hell yeah. No, just uh, knight, knight takes b4, man. Knight takes b4. Uh, I'll tilt the knights so that maybe they're a little bit more easily. You can tell what they are. Just out of consideration for the stream. The horse gazes forlornly to the east. <laughs> Something like that. C1. C1. 
one to g5. Ah, okay, okay. It moves like a queen because it's not capturing, etc. So what it can do right now is capture this pawn. What's being threatened by this? Just this pawn. Uh, and I'll take that knight. I don't care if the knight... Uh, or I'll take that pawn back with the... Take that chameleon with the knight. Because I don't really care if that's immobilized. Compared to my rook. Um, this is currently a completely free pincer. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. Uh, yeah, it is. Because it's only... Pincers only work diagonally, right? Will the blood ever be washed from his hooves? <laughs> oh, that's funny. C could I get confirmation, David, that pincer is just a reminder? They only work horizontally and vertically, right? Pincers don't capture diagonally, and also not when you move into them. Yeah, I knew the move into them. Um, actually, we can check here. And he can't take... Uh, all he can do is move his king, and then we can take something else and check with the with the rook. Uh, and he can't move away from this to capture it, and he can't jump over this to capture it. So we're going to check. We're going to play knight takes c2 check. <laughs> oh. I just love, I just love, you know, the horse just like, just like standing on its hind too, looking at its forward hooves, you know, just wondering if it can ever atone uh, for the atrocities that it was forced to commit. E1, D2. All right, can we do some damage now by checking our opponent? What can we what can we threaten here? I mean, that thing's defended. We have to be careful. Oh god, checkmating the this, this is a real pain in the ass, isn't it? All right, where can we get what can we can we do here? Well, this does mean that we get this free pawn now. Oh, pawns don't, I forget that. Okay, when I thought that, I thought that this thing was defended, but it's not even, um, so it doesn't work. Do we just grab free pincers? The thing is, if we grab this pincer, he can move this in a way that threatens capture, but that's actually not even good, right? Hmm. I guess let's take this. It defends the rook, after all. Uh, and... It's not being threatened by any of the pincers. So, you know what? We'll just do this. All right. Bishop takes d5. Knight d4 hard mate? <laughs> Got he. Okay. Feeling good. Feeling good about our position. Absolute monster of a Frappuccino bishop. I'm really glad... I'm really glad that we have doubled pawns because it means his long leaper can't capture anything, which is kind of ridiculous. Same with the Frappuccino and this long leaper. Man, what a what a setup right now. This is crazy. G1, G2. 
All right, defending this pawn, basically. Or that pincer. I think what we want to do... Hmm, if I chase it down, that's actually a problem. Okay, hold on. If we check with the knight, he's got he's got a lot of options for how no, but if we Oh but it check with the queen. Uh, but if I Oh, okay, we're almost there, aren't we? Yeah, we're almost there. Okay, um, just gonna do a cool queen c6, or sorry, queen c7, queen c7. I'm floundering. Oh man, I missed something slightly clever. Oh no, what was the slightly clever? I am Kyrian. G5 e3. Oh, it doesn't. It doesn't mobilize your own pieces. Is that what you're saying? Uh, he's threatening the knight, but I recapture the knight. Man, that that is the saddest queen. Uh, <laughs> that is the saddest queen that he's got on his side of the field, um, or whatever it's called, the withdrawer. I don't really want to take it. So now, am I close to mate? I think I, I think I have mate. Almost? Okay. Queen c3 check. Uh, because he can't capture it with a pawn because the pawn has to be the thing that moves to it. Uh, and the only place that a pawn move can capture it is here and this pawn can't get there. Um, he can't take it with the king because I've got the bishop there defending the queen. Um, I think this is promising. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna play queen c3 check. Queen c3 check, quote unquote check. I mean, I guess I don't have to tell him check because the game just ends with capturing the opponent's king. But I mean, that's what whatever. That's what mate is anyway. Man, this is this is nuts. The stuff I was doing with chameleon plus immobilizer should have been withdrawer plus immobilizer. Much better combo. Oh, yes, yes. With Trar plus Immobilizer is a much better combo. Uh, D2, E2. Okay, so he runs away this way. Now, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this checkmate? Oh no, he can move his pieces to block. Um, but he can't because he's checked by the knight. Is this mate? Isn't this checkmate? I mean, it's a it's a pretty checkmate. I tell you what. Right? King can't move because queen queen knight, uh, and you can't block. You can't block the rook. Uh, because then the knight takes. No? H5, E5, not mate? Uh, I capture your king with my rook. <laughs> yeah, no, that's why it's a double, it's the knight and the rook, right? I was worried about removing the knight check. Yeah, 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 no, it's, it's the double check is the problem. You can't take both. 
you can't block both, and your king doesn't have any squares to move to. Without the knight, that undoes the check. GG. Alright. <laughs> oh, man. Wow. That was nutty. This game seems hard from a Baroque perspective just because it's so unintuitive. Here we are. Okay, I guess we go first. This is game two. We have the Baroque pieces this time. Baroque side is easy. Just develop the objectively strongest piece. I don't know, man. I don't know that it's that easy. Losing 420 points is worth it. Can't argue with you there. Can't argue with you there. Um, that being said, I think what I want to do... Maybe a quick one of these. Why not? G5. I'm going to play G5. The mathematically strongest. <laughs> We're going to play G2 to G5. H786. All right, all right, all right. Do I want to continue to do this? What I'm about to do? This is probably no. Maybe you're regretting my my acts and my deeds already. Uh Chameleon H5. Vanilla soy latte the immobilizer. <laughs> yeah. What's funny is I was going to say, actually, I would frappuccino it because that's the only coffee drink that I have, but that's the literal word for what the action is. <laughs> so. In Mad Chest, there's a piece that was rather similar to Immobilizer. Perhaps a little bit stronger, perhaps weaker, but it was broken. H6, G5. Okay. We then, with our chameleon, capture the rook. Am I, am I taking crazy pills? Isn't this what happens? <laughs> that, that's why I put it there. You rip me. <laughs> Do, do you want to take it back? I don't want it to be like a, a wash from the get-go. You know. <laughs> Can we, let, let's rewind. Let's rewind. Let's rewind. This is potentially the last game of the of the challenge. I, I want to see what happens. Feel bad given the prediction market? No, 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 no. Listen, that's a freebie for me. I'll take the I'll take the shit from the believers if this ends up going south for me. What's important is that we showcase <laughs> the game, you know? But that's why I put the chameleon there, yeah? Clever, yeah, right? At least I felt. I felt smart about it. F7, F6? Seven F six is a good one. All right, immobilizer F three. Feels pretty smart to me too. I thank you, Nathaniel. You're too kind. Baroque House is gonna be wild, dude. I'm. I'm so into Baroque House. That's a fantastic idea. I do remember what pieces I even have. <laughs> yeah.
T76, <laughs> what is even my structure? <laughs> oh. oh, honestly, I think that's a pretty good move. Um, I just gotta, I just gotta think for a moment now. It definitely behooves us to save our chameleon. Question is what the best way of doing that is. Uh, keeping it on the H file seems good. Is it kind of the only piece that can counter the might of the immobilizer? I c well, yes and no. Like structurally, realistically, I agree with you, but of course there's no reason that like a bishop couldn't attack a mobilizer from two, two squares away, you know what I mean? Chinese wall, here we go. Is that what it's called? This is the great wall opening? I guess it's kind of like a stone wall situation. Okay, let's, let's think. Let's think. We could obviously take... We could obviously take... You know what? When I went F3... It occurs to me now that I... Well, no, because then it'd get kicked and then nothing would really happen. Oh, but then, well, I don't know. I, I don't know if maybe I should have played d5 instead. Uh, what I'm thinking is I don't want to take the chameleon with the bishop because the chameleon is doing a lot of work right now. I'm I'm stuck between two moves. Nah, I know my move. I think every single day of the week here we play Pincer E6. This is Cheskers all over again. I made a mistake last game developing the coordinator, not the immobilizer. I'm back with mozzarella sticks. Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Also, you can't take the chameleon with the bishop. I have all the bishops. Oh, <laughs> what? Yeah, sorry. What I meant is taking the bishop with the chameleon. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I genuinely, I'm in disbelief that it's been six and a half hours of the stream. Usually, I'm pretty dead by now, but between the Lemniscate, <laughs> the the good 5D chess, um, and Baroque chess. It's just been, it's been such a wild ride. Okay, F6 takes G5. Um, yeah, no, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Um, we're, we're just gonna play Immobilizer F7. That's, uh, that's what we wanted this whole time. been a fun stream i'm glad you thought so too i figure most of the time if it's fun to be the one streaming then you know ideally it's fun to watch as well <laughs> b1c3 excuse me uh i think you mean knight c6 right eight N all of those. 8-N all of those. 8-N looks like a face of a dude talking. It's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> 9-N looks like a cyclops talking. B C okay, Knight C6. All right, <laughs> Knight C6. Um, okay, that's what we expected. <laughs> okay. Now I have to think very carefully. I have to think very carefully here.
right. Oh no! There we go. D5. D5. Still trying to see the Cyclops. <laughs> 9 minus 10 is how you fix when black wrote as white. Oh, I see. Uh, I didn't know that. That's interesting. Oh, 9 minus N. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, 9 minus N. Like, okay, okay. So that inverts the... I see what you're saying. No, that... Yeah, that's what I was trying to say. The 9 is kind of like an I. Uh, you know, it's like a single I. Um, like a monocular. <laughs> it took me so long to see speaking dude in 8-N. <laughs> I think that one's kind of straightforward. The 8s are the eyes, and then the N is like a mouth, you know? like a, uh, You can trick yourself into maybe seeing 9 as a cylinder with one edge missing. Hell yeah, dude. I, I get that. H8, H7. Alright, H8, H7 has been played. <laughs> um, that restricts night movement. What does that actually do? H8, H7. What's the idea behind Rook H7? We can really lock down all of his pieces practically if we move our chameleon out there or our queen out there. Or withdraw, I should say. You know what? Why not move our withdrawer out there? Why shouldn't I move my withdrawer out there? Yeah. Withdrawer. I think that's the move. Withdraw H5. Takes H7. What? H7 isn't being immobilized. But I also forgot you could Sudoku pieces. G7? Okay. I completely did not account for this. Um, completely did not account for that. Uh, but that's fine. Um, what's the best thing we can do about this? We have two options to defend against this. Losing that immobilizer hurts, but maybe we can take the opportunity. Because here's what I'm thinking. If we defend... Guys, don't tell David this. No, that forces him to run. We lose the immobilizer, which is, like, objectively the most powerful piece that there is. But maybe... Maybe we just immobilize it, right? 
Yeah, I, I'm not gonna. I, okay, I had some like crazy ideas that I was gonna do where we like sack some pieces and do some wonky shit, but instead I think I'm just gonna immobilize everything by playing, um, what's it called? Uh, Immobilizer G7. Muzzer are pro proving once again why they're objectively the strongest piece. Signal me one to unmute. Unmute. <laughs> The thing that I was thinking of that I didn't do is uh, chameleon here, because then when the rook takes, then I can take, and then it'll help me to take the king. You know what I mean? But I decided instead to just immobilize everything, because it's really good. <laughs> it's really good to immobilize everything. You feel me? You get what I was going for, chat? Chameleon, take the rook, threaten the king. The only issue is then the king can move, and it's like, well, I'd rather just immobilize everything. C8, E6. Uh, Alright, easiest chameleon capture of my life. Traded upon for a chameleon, and now that has genuinely... Now I think we have checkmate. Whoops. Uh, it's not pawn. Exactly. So my spoiler was dumb. Oh, wait. Do you have a... He can't take... I didn't even read the spoiler. Uh, oh, because it was a spoiler. That's why I didn't read it. He can't take because queen takes f7 is mate. What are you talking about? <laughs> what? What? It was back when Immobilizer was on F7? Oh, yeah. Well, he can't take because he's immobilized. Oh, you're saying can't take with the Rook? Whatever. C6, E5. Okay, E5 has happened, which is good. Uh, except that we capture that piece, right? In this game, the Immobilizer is worth a Rook and a Bishop... A knight, a pawn, and then some? Okay, well, fair enough. All right, Ryan, you convinced us. Okay, fine. Sorry, David. That's why I was, that's why I played the pawn move there earlier, was to prevent this from happening, because otherwise you defend F7. Wait, is the pawn on G5 also captured? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot for <laughs> Okay. <laughs> we have a cool we have a really cool mating net here. <laughs> we have we have an amazing mating net here. And I'm gonna ask if maybe <laughs> if maybe David wants another game after this one as well. Because I'm I'm having too much fun. <laughs> It's just so, it's so mind-bending, man. It's crazy. The pawn on g5 also captured. I didn't, I didn't even realize. Hard to see, hard to see what he should do here. Actually, hilariously. Well, no, because then he can't... Never mind. All right, the immobilizer's busted. <laughs> you convinced me. D7... D, D, uh, D8, D7, I know that giving up... I know that's giving up the queen, but I think this prolongs my life a bit. Um, yeah, so the idea here... Uh, the idea here is that if I take, I'll be threatening his king, but then he can take back. 
Um, so I think he's right. I was trying to figure out uh, whether this was the only way that he could survive. if there's a better way for me to win. Maybe I should just start thinking of a follow-up. Not really, because I can't get my leaper into the mix, because my pawns on those three ranks are still where they are. And I don't have a light squared. Leaper. What's the fastest way to convert? Doesn't check, he has to take. So he can't, so he has to move. If we play, okay, hold on. Retreater f7 is forcing. It forces king d8. Can we use that to our advantage? King's on a dark square, probably not. H5 of 7 is funny because it prevents me from... Yeah, I was about to ask how how check works, if you can castle out of check. Um, but yeah, that's the move that I was looking at because it forces king d8. But does that actually gain me anything? I don't know. I don't know if it does. Um, do we just take the queen? We've got another chameleon. I, yeah, I don't see a, I don't see a good way to convert. Let's just take the queen. Check. Chameleon takes queen on d7. And, I mean, this only legal move. Uh, but we're also not doing legal moves, so I guess. <laughs> so I guess I'll, I'll leave it to David how he wants to respond. Capture? Okay, okay. Now the only PC has left is one rook? You're not even wrong. <laughs> That's kind of nutty. <laughs> Dude, that's brutal. What the hell? happens there 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 not much happens uh, all right here's what we do we do withdraw f7 withdraw f7 I have plans it can hit your mobilizer if I move every single pawn out of the way <laughs> Oh, isn't king f7 technically legal? You're right. 
It is. Uh, it is. It is a legal move. I guess that's why. That's why I gave him the option. Well, not not that I was thinking of that, but I wanted to catch all. <laughs> hey, Narik. I think Narik might be confused. D seven e D seven D seven E six. Oops. D seven E six. Uh. What a move that is. <laughs> wow. Okay. Holy shit. Chat, I have like the chattest play. Oh no, he can take with the pawn. Oh no. <laughs> I was thinking immobilizer f6 is fantastic. Because uh, if he takes with the knight, which then is allowed to move, I can take his king. But he can take with the pawn, I forgot. Uh... <laughs> it's really funny. Okay. So I can take my withdrawer right now. Uh, this defends both the withdrawer. And uh, my pincer. So I'm gonna go ahead and play long leaper G. Do it? Oh, you can't take with the pawn? Oh, right, because it's... Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on. No, no, okay. You know, I thought, oh, it's great because I immobilized the pawn. But then I thought, wait. He can take it with the pawn. <laughs> okay, the pawn's also immobilized. All right, that is, a, that is a great ending. Well, it's not mate yet. But, you know, we're, we're getting there. <laughs> Hopefully. Although, I don't know. It's not mate yet. I think my other move is actually probably better. But this is funny. Because you also can't capture it with any of those other pieces. They're still stuck. Uh, H7, F7. All right. The Rook is now immobilized. Um, but... He can now capture, uh, he can now capture with the, I almost call it a long leaper, with the knight, which actually, I haven't done myself any favors here, right? Opponent dictating how they're beaten, that's fun. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but hold on here, this isn't, this actually isn't fantastic. I don't I don't have a quick conversion because it's Baroque chess, right? Can take with the knight. Hmm. So this is opponent. I don't think anything can read that situation is me dictating anything, baiting perhaps. So this is opponent intentionally and coaxing out bad moves. It's a fun move though. Uh, and, you know, we're up for the challenge. This is vanilla versus Baroque. Yes, Narik? <laughs> all right. Here's what we're going to do. Because there, there isn't a quick way to convert. What we're, we're going to do is just immobilize all those pieces. Um, so really what I did is, like, nothing. <laughs> Move a chameleon next to an immobilized king is the fastest conversion. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was going to do initially. Uh, I was going to defend those pieces and then mate with a chameleon. Um... But that's not what happened. Instead, I gave up my withdrawer for actually no reason. Uh, but it's fine. It's fine. Uh, 
Uh, A7A5? Oh, that's a really good move. Um... I can't now threaten any sort of mate very easily because uh, I don't have access to the square where my um, coordinator would mate. It's actually difficult to convert here. Let's see, what can we do? We can prob probably the best way to do this is to get our pieces into the back line, right? Because we can't, he's also horizontally, you know, like defended. Oh, you know what we can do? Okay. Long leaper, uh, long leaper E3. Long leaper E3. Gotta get my one piece free somehow. <laughs> one piece is always free. <laughs> oh God. <gasps> It's really funny. <laughs> All right, okay, this is good. This is what this does is it locks down his pawn if I want to like push this pawn and sort of, I know, threaten something somehow. These pawns defend each other really well because they work against the long leapers. Um, I think maybe what happens next is I get my chameleon into the game. Here's what I was thinking. This is, well, okay, I guess you guys will see. In traditional chess, the king on e6 is farcical. I don't know if it's even bad in Baroque versus chess. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, c7, c6, I think, actually really helps us. We need to get our other pieces into the game. Um, Number is going to be good. We go up there. Then that's something. Here's what I think we do. Out there, out there. Uh, is good for... Okay. Pincer C5. By the way, I can't play third game, but someone else in chat with a board should play with you while you have this set up. All right, maybe, maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do that. But this is good because we have to find like an interesting way to convert now. Because um, the withdrawer was going to be kind of an easy way to force that. But. <laughs> what we're doing now is baiting the capture of some of these, uh, some of these pieces. D6, C7. D6, C7. D6, C5, okay. So D takes C5 has happened. Uh, now, we threaten mate with the long leaper. Long leaper takes. Which is a little schnasty. His pieces are immobilized. This is tricky. I might get a long leaper conversion here. All right, e6, d6 has happened, defending both pieces. Um, Now, can't takes here because of that, so that pawn is stuck. Uh, I want another threaten with the long leaper. Can't go there or there, but it can't go there. And so it can't go there, but it can't go there, but then it can't, okay. Long leaper d3. Schnasty, he say. Yeah, 
I shmeen it. Not fucking around here. <laughs> Alright, this is really good. This is really good. You can't take... Pawn is A8, A6. Alright, A6 it is. I have to think about whether this is mate. The move that I want to play is pincer C5. Is this mate? Okay. Can't take... Okay, where can the king go? Can't take here. Because then this takes. Can't go here or here. Can't go here. Can't go here. Because then long leaper. It can go here. It has a legal move. Uh, no, it doesn't. Because then I can take... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And <laughs> redeem points to ban the word schnasty. <laughs> I don't say that word too often. I mean, knowing me, I'd start saying it more frequently just <laughs> as he banned the word. Yeah, this looks like mate to me. What a sick mate. This wasn't like a lame, you know, chameleon mate or whatever. This is like a nice Baroque mate, right? Yeah. Oh, this is awesome. <laughs> Dude, Baroque chess fucking rules. Holy shit. This is great.